So we're gonna make a couple of tests here on our ballon but before we can do the tests we're gonna have to zero out our spectrum analyzer with a tracker so I just connect the wires directly here that I'm gonna use and on our spectrum analyzer we're just gonna go ahead and normalize it and now I can go ahead and rewire this here so on the first part here, I connected the wires just on the one side. So right now it just goes through this coil. And it goes straight through. So it's basically we are testing the transmission line, how much loss we have in the setting. And it really doesn't look bad at all. We turn on the marker here at the lowest point oops sorry at the lowest point it's maybe barely touches two decibel dropping down here around 23 megahertz go higher up in the HF range it definitely goes better so that was one side. Let's try out the other side. So I swapped it over to the other side. And things look really the same, I would say. Yeah, tiny bit worse here. No, wait, stop, that's a megahertz. Never mind. A uh, tiny bit better, actually. <laughs> if you go around, across it. 0.7 is the first on there. An interesting part that I saw is, so right now we are testing this here, if I go across, so I hook up on this side, that side, and right here, I go to the other side. So there is no direct electrical connection to it, it's all just electromagnetic field. So it's basically a transformer that we have here going. And you really can tell we have some losses. And again, this here does not make any sense to look at these numbers. <laughs> it's just playing around here. So according to that, it's close to DC it's working fairly decent and then we pretty much block it off so that's what we kind of hope for the common mode current but this here is not the common mode current that's just moving off so let's set up the rig for common mode current testing so here's my setup I just used one side the green line uh, sorry, on both sides, but only the green line because the other one would be where the central conductor is of your coax, and that's the shield. And the common mode current just runs on the shield, and the current that runs through the central conductor should also run on the shield on the inside. And the common mode is on the shield on the outside. So, what we are simulating here is the common mode on the outside. So, it goes straight through. So what, when we were looking at the before, what we got is um, we got barely any attenuation by the ballon and this time we want attenuation. So let's go ahead. The ground I just connected with each other. You really don't need to do that because in your spectrum analyzer ground is of the tracking generator and the RF input is connected anyway so it's not that important but let's look at here what we have and this looks pretty good to me so right around 1.9 is where we would start with 160 meters and we have an attenuation of 30 decibel and pretty straight across 30 decimal right here at for some strange reason at 
10.8 megahertz we nearly get 40 decibel attenuation but it continues on with our 30 decibel attenuation all the way across to around here and then it gets flaky so definitely the six meter band would not be your preferred idea here the same as hmm, I guess 10 meter you could go up to it so that's not bad I wish it would be a little bit stronger down to 40 decibel Whoa, just me touching that changes things a bit. So maybe we can arrange a few wires here to make the core work better. So, so far you see changes when I touch the core. Let's go ahead and just for the fun connect just two wires and see what happens. So we go ahead and connect just the bottom one. See what kind of attenuation we would get. It's like this here. And yeah, we definitely see here a slight peak up. It's definitely not quite as good as before. On the other side, same thing. So let's go ahead and hook up all four of them. I had to cheat a little bit here with the alligator clamps, but looking at the spectrum analyzer, Things really haven't changed between just a green pair or using the green and red pair on it. A setup that I saw somebody else doing is using 50 ohms on both sides. Oops, actually they use 25 ohms so it's 50 ohms totally across. Uh, I did a small boo-boo here. I used 200 ohm resistors on this side. So we have 50 ohm here and 50 ohm out there. So our resistance is a bit higher. But if you go ahead and look at the spectrum analyzer, it didn't change to, sorry, I didn't really change too drastically. This peak here got slightly further down, but we are still around 30 decibel blockage on here. So even the TRX bench guy got about the same numbers. Well, that is really the minimum we need. If you look at this video. Okay, there. and here is our test result. So. <laughs> you may already see so all expectations are fulfilled so have a look it is really it is really nice so here marker one at uh, 1.9 uh, megahertz so 160 meter band with 24.4 db attenuation 3.6 80 meter band with 28 or 29 db 29.5 db attenuation marker 3 20 meter band with 36.6 db attenuation and here marker 4 in the 10 meter band 28 500 with 38.4 db attenuation and that is absolutely awesome so pretty much my test here is very similar. He gets a slightly lower 
section right here but has a weaker drop off that's I think he is using the 41 was it 41 core what he is using I'm using the 31 core which is for lower frequencies that's definitely shows a little bit difference there and yeah so I think it's fairly decent comparable of course I recommend watching his videos about the balance he does a much better job than me in explaining how balance work and everything also he has much better accents than I do my accent got a little bit faded already Anyway, that's it for today.